Welcome back to Vancouver Carpenter, you guys. So yeah, time for the second coat. And I am actually kind of bagged today. I didn't sleep well last night. Blah, 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 bunch of complaining. But you know what? Job doesn't get done and the video just don't get done if I don't get in there and make it. Anyways, time to get in there and see what we're gonna get up to. And I'm probably gonna start with what I want to do the least first. Quick little preview on the texture and the ceiling. Right there, you can see where I sanded off yesterday. It's looking nice. One coat, looking good. A little bit of shrinkage there between the, uh, the gaps, but it's all super sound. So we're gonna be able to sand it off and skim it real nice. All right, this is gonna be nasty, but let's get it done. You guys, it was so much worse than I thought it was gonna be. I knew it was gonna be bad, but it was so much worse. Take a look at this. Just get a load of the floor for starters. Uh -huh. All right, now, the walls, pretty bad. It just sort of would come off and you never knew where it was gonna stop and you had to be super careful not to get these jagged um, saw-like pieces under your thumbnail or slicing your hand as you're scraping it because it's all old sharp oil-based paint not too bad there but yeah okay now let's check out the ceiling oh man we got bare drywall there so all that paper was just kind of decomposed under there because my guess is they had a leak a while back water gets in through right there and then it just hangs out there. And then after that, all the years of showering while it was all wet and soggy under there, cause it to build up every time someone showers. So all that paper just scraped off and is now down here. So bad. So what on earth are we gonna do about that? Well, first off, I gotta clean this place up. As much as I would love to replace the drywall on that ceiling, that's all we have. It's a pretty small piece. All right, now what I'm gonna do is liberally brush guards all over everything. I like the smell of this stuff. It basically just kind of smells like watery white glue, which might actually be what it is. I've always thought that maybe it's like just sort of thinned down wallpaper sizing. So sizing is not like, I don't know why it's called wallpaper size. Size just means adhesive. But we're just gonna do this to get all of the paper all glued back down and give like this dusty surface a nice porous, or not porous, a nice surface that's ready for whatever it is I choose to apply to it. In this case, it's gonna be drywall mud. And you might be surprised what I choose to do here to solve the problem of not having any so yeah, the big problem we have here is that we have bare gypsum. So that's not even um, drywall paper. That's just literally like the paper has been eaten off. So yeah, this should stabilize it all so that we can do something about that. We definitely have to reinforce this. And I wanna try and do it without a trip to the hardware store, ideally. So I was right that this was a leak. There was a leak a while back. Fortunately, the roof's been repaired, so it won't come back, at least. 
you know, hopefully long enough for my tailgate warranty to expire. Which if you don't know what that is, it's when you can't see my tailgate anymore over the horizon, your warranty's expired. <laughs> Come on guys, you know I honor my work. So this stuff is great, um, but there is a caveat, and that is that it needs 24 hours to dry. So we won't be doing anything else in this room today. We gotta get this stuff on here, let it soak in, let it dry up, and then we'll be able to coat it tomorrow. So that's what you need to know about guards, and that's also why I haven't made a video about it yet, because even though it's a great product, you can't work with it right away the way, same way you can with shellac, which is like in one hour you can coat the stuff. But because this is water-based, if you put drywall mud onto it, within the 24 hours before it's cured, it's going to reactivate it and you're going to get blisters. Had it happen. Alright, I've got a few more spots that I need to put this stuff. So if you remember from the last video on this place, uh, this weird papery stuff up here is just like wrapping paper. So not like Christmas wrapping paper, but like, you know, say you wrap a present and then you put this light sort of tissue looking paper stuff in there to fluff up the bag and, you know, give another layer of surprise, I guess. I don't know. That's what it was. So they painted the wall and put this paper on and then painted it again to give it this sort of textured look that I'll show you in a second. But yeah, a bunch of other spots I want to make sure are nice and sound before I start mudding this place. All right, you guys. Um, I'm starting to panic a little bit here because even though this is actually a tiny taping job, this is a big job and I have a huge amount of stuff to get done. So I got to like try and mentally juggle how I'm going to change the order of this job to actually get this taped and get out of here today because it's like 1.30 and I haven't even mixed up any mud yet. So let's see what I got going on. Okay, so the first thing I need done before I can start taping is I need the ceiling sanded, but I'm not gonna be able to do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sand all the joints. I'm gonna sand just near all the joints so that I can actually tape this place. The other thing I need to do is I can't sand this part of the ceiling until I have scaffold built. But if I spend all my time building scaffold, then I'm not gonna get to taping this. So what we're gonna do, like I said, is sand all those so that I can tape it, get this place pre-filled, and then I can actually start thinking about taping it. The other thing I did is I actually sanded the texture off this wall right here and put a first coat on it and put all these boxes here so that I don't have to move them again. All right, but first things first, I gotta sit down, finish this coffee, get my zen going on, and then we're gonna montage the rest of this video because if I don't get a montage going and I talk the rest of this video, I'm not getting anything done and I'm not getting out of here before dark. And that's not happening. Mm -hmm.
So as you can see, we got it all taped and pre-filled. When I come back tomorrow, I'll sand the walls down and skim them out. The only corner I cut today, well, it wasn't a cut corner, but I put the, speaking of corners, I didn't install the corner beads because I can install those corner beads tomorrow and coat them in the same day without any problems. But I wanted all this tape drying tonight so that when I come back tomorrow, I can sand down the ceiling and skim this place out. I don't know if I'll be able to coat the entire place in a day or not yet, especially while filming, but yeah, it's looking good. Taped everything by hand today because I would have spent more time cleaning my corner tools than just, you know, using the old super taper and the slot bucket. All right, you guys, I am now officially done and cleaned up. So don't forget to tune into the next one to find out how I deal with that ceiling, see how the sanding of all this stuff goes. I'm gonna be using the Tomahawk smoothing blades, so that's gonna be super cool. Anyways, lots more coming. I wanna say a big thanks to anyone who's been watching. And of course, if you're getting something out of this, don't forget to feather that like button like you feather those edges. And again, if you're not subscribed yet, why not? You know, what's holding you back? What do you got to lose? It's not gonna hurt. Anyways, thanks for watching. Till the next video, I gotta drive home. Super tired.